I'm Melissa from Nerd Caliber, and I'm here at PAX East 2014 with MC Frontalot, who is famous for being a nerdcore rapper. Um, you actually are considered one of the pioneers of rock, nerdcore rap. Sure how do you am. how do you feel about that? I feel positively <laughs> about that. Well, I read that people say you're the absolute founder, and that's probably not true. <laughs> Why do you doubt them? Why, why well, no, you. S I you no, I read a statement. Plausible. I heard you. No, I read so a. So little hair. No, I read a. Wrinkles <laughs> about the eyes might have. No, I read that you made a statement that there were predecessors and people um, that you looked yeah, up so to, and yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, no, the thing I managed to do was put the phrase together, nerdcore hip hop, uh, okay. which luckily for me caught on. Um, but yes, of course, like rappers have always been nerds. They're like. They're poetry nerds, uh, in a in a sense, right? Like they care about language and rhyming, and they've always cared about comic books and video games. And there was a, I sometimes think of the um, like prototype nerdcore song being Skilo's "I Wish," which is a song about his feelings of inadequacy and and um, isolation and sadness. So, as we're going forward with you know the future of technology and everything, the music industry obviously is changing very much. Uh -huh. And being a nerd, you probably love the tech aspect of things. But how do you feel about the way? Because you know it used to be you would buy the eight tracks, you would buy the cassettes, then you buy the CDs. Now everything's digital, and it's probably harder and harder from like a sales point in terms of when you have a concert, mm -hmm. your merch booth, and you know also your music sales in general. Mm -hmm. Like, what's kind of your thought on the way that the music industry is kind of going? Well, you know, at the beginning of the music industry, there was sheet music, and they could withhold the sheet music from you if you didn't give them money, and then you couldn't play the song on the piano at home because you didn't have the sheet music. And then recordings got fancy enough that people wanted to own those, and the playback equipment got cheap enough that people had that in their home, and then still the barrier was, give me the physical object. Uh, and I'll give you the money, and if I don't give you the money, you're going to withhold the physical object from me. And just ever since MP3, there's been no way to withhold the music from anyone. Like, you can't stop them from hearing it because they haven't paid you. And that just has converted every musician into someone who has to have something else to offer, right? You can still withhold live performances from people who haven't paid you. Um, you can certainly withhold t-shirts. Although 3D printing is getting more and more sophisticated, and you guys are going to be downloading my t-shirts pretty soon. Um, so, right, you diversify into merch, although merch has always been a big part of touring, I think. Um, and live shows have gotten more important. And. Uh, as far as the recordings go, the little window of withholding music from people in, until they cough up some dollars, that part of history has like somewhat closed, and instead we now say, all right, I'm going to keep making these recordings, and if you guys love them, then please like you know, feel some proprietary involvement with it by supporting it uh, with money. <laughs> and then you do, and it's just like we all have our palms out, like, please, sir, alms. Alms for the Bard, which is probably how it was, you know, back in the day. Back in the day, before she, before people were literate enough for sheet music transactions. Um, now you are a staple in the Pax culture and the Penny Arcade culture. Um, going back, you perform at a lot. You, I'm not even sure it has it been every single Penny Arcade event. Yeah, everyone. Now, are you planning to go to the newly announced uh, PAX South in Texas? Oh, I'll have them if they'll have me. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll be there if they'll take me down. Now, being an international traveler, does that is it hard for you, like on a personal front, because you're you're flying around the world, obviously leaving your home, leaving your family, and does that you know, weigh on you, or do you just love your art so much that you can kind of balance that out? <laughs> <laughs> um, well. I've been cruising around on the road for eight years. Uh, I'm only out, like at the most, I'm out, you know, maybe four, four and a half months out of the year. And at the least, it's much less. It's just maybe like a month's worth, worth of weekends, long weekends. Um, so it's not as disruptive as it probably, or as jet setting as it might kind of seem. Um, but I, I like I would not want to be out on the road for four months in a van if I had like a little baby. So as soon as I get a hold of one of those, 
probably scaling down the touring quite a bit. So see me while you have the chance, America, and adjoining properties and rest of world. <laughs> well, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but thank you so much. Thank and you. My I, mine. again, I'm Melissa from Nerd Caliber, and thank you for watching.